drink cinema. Jeez. Yay. So, uh, thank you to the one person that's watching. <laughs> Clear away. Um, so, to cover off what we have, what we've already said, it's lockdown. You all should be at home. Uh, so we thought we'd give you something to do while you are at home. Um, and that something should have been in the last couple of days watching Plan 9 from Outer Space. Yeah. And now it is listening to us talk about Plan 9 from Outer Space. So another cheers, because now we can another hear you cheers. 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 Hang on. Up to the, up to the camera. You, I don't have a microphone, so cheers. All right, Plan 9 from Let's Outer Space. Stuck in. All right, I, I'm going to read. Oh. When you Google Plan 9 from Outer Space, mm -hmm. um, oh, and I heard the, um, it's called something the other day, anyway. Uh, now, this is just from Google. Right. Aliens, Eros and Tanner arrive on Earth and try to raise the dead in hopes of overtaking the planet while the military tries to keep the aliens' activities a secret. Yep. That is, that is in the that's it. film, but that's not how I would review it. No. I'd say that's a plot. Yes. But, um, it, oh God, it does not do the film justice. No. Uh, but it's also like, how can you really summarise this movie? I don't, I, like... Well, IMDb says, Evil aliens attack Earth and set their terrible Plan 9 into action. As the aliens resurrect the dead of the Earth, the lives of the living are endangered. Okay, that okay. makes sense. That's another thing that's added to the description of the film. Uh, it's rated 4 out of 10 on IMDb. Oh. Uh, and 68% on Rotten Tomatoes. Six, isn't that good? Yeah. That's like out of 100%. Yeah. Plan I'm 9 from Outer Space, that. this is Wikipedia now, is a 1957 independently made American black and white science fiction horror film produced, written, directed, and edited by Ed Wood. Correct. The film was yeah. shot in November. You know a film's going to be good if it's shot in one month. <laughs> and across probably about a week, I think. Yeah. The film was shot in November of 1956 and had a theatrical preview screening in 1957 at the Carlton Theatre in Los Angeles. The on-screen title at this time read Grave Robbers from Outer Space. It later went into general release in 1959, retitled Plan 9 from Outer Space. Right. Well, I obviously Ed Wood didn't have a lot of money. No, the budget was sixty thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. Um, Which... I think he spent most of that on one sequence of kind of armies firing at UFOs. That had to. That has to have been stock footage. I think that was about fifty nine thousand dollars of the budget. It was definitely stock footage. So much stock when footage. When it then cuts to the colonel, commander, whatever his name yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. He's clearly standing in front of a grey cardboard wall. That it's it really is one of the my favourite things about this film is that that grey wall, just about every character stands in front of it for some scene. Yes. Like the yes. colonel stands in front of it with the binoculars, watching all of the pointless shooting at the UFOs, and then the police sergeant stands in front of it for something the pilot stands in front of it, or they just grab a little bit of cardboard and sitting in front of it, and then it becomes the cockpit. The flamboyant alien leader sits in that room, sure. Ah, uh, yes. The flam uh, the flamboyant leader just... Uh, his name's just Leader. Well, I, think that's, I, I was thinking that. It's just the, the leader. Like, I don't know. The leader, you know, like the Simpsons. Yeah. And... Na, 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 leader. He's quite possibly... And this includes Tor Johnson, the worst actor in the film. I don't know about that. <laughs> no, because when the boss alien talks, he, it's like he can't remember his lines. Well, when Tor Johnson speaks, it's like he can't remember how to talk. <laughs> At one point, I was like, I wasn't sure if he had a stroke. 
while he was talking. Or if he'd already died. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a bit... It's, well, he, does it, he has, like, it's... two lines in the movie because he dies fairly early on. Yeah. Um, but it's not very... I want to say legible, but that's not the right word. No, this is how it. This is how it sounds. It's um, what is it? He goes, "Oh, we're gonna get a flash on Rebecca." <laughs> They're like, he's gotta go search the cemetery. So like, it's kind of dark out there, Inspector. I think he's an inspector. Yeah. He goes, "You're sure you're a sure, flashlight from the jungle." <laughs> So, he's Swedish, Tor Johnson. Yeah, I gathered yeah. that from the um, size of him. I want to... Are Swedish people big? I've just found it on... The police, led by Inspector <laughs> Daniel Clay, <laughs> the arrived at the scene. Yeah. Who found them? The man and girl. This is the listening. Medical uh, examiner being around yet? <laughs> just right. The morgue wagon ought to be along most any time. You get there, Stephen? <laughs> yeah, as much as we could. <laughs> Pretty scared. Finding a mess like this ought to make anyone try. But that's not even the best yet. Other boys take the guy and the girl back to town. You take Charles. <laughs> okay, Inspector. What are you going to do? Knock around a little. Speak. Come it's dark out there. Once you get beyond the range of those lights, you won't yes. be able to see your hand in front of your face. I will get one of the flashlights from the patrol car. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> I'm not get so... one of the. He talks like some sort of robot zombie already. So I might like get a flash on a patrol car. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm not, I'm not necessarily making fun of the Swedish accent or the broken English. It's the fact that he's cast as a major role in this film. Yeah, despite and that, I think he, like gets one of the top billings in the thing. It's like yeah, yeah. him and Bella Lugosi and Vampira. Well, Vampira? because Bella Bella Lugosi was like of B grade sci-fi horror films of the 50s, Bella Lugosi was it. Like, he played Dracula and um, all sorts of other things. <laughs> and everything that Ed Wood did that he, he was in. Um, but Bella Lugosi... Uh, Lugosi... Well, another thing that makes it so funny is that Bella Lugosi um, died during filming... Which is really bad luck, because we just read that the film was filmed in a month. Yeah, so yeah. So it's he... really bad timing. And um, so... <laughs> Half of the movie, his <laughs> Bella Lugosi yeah. walks around like it's actually COVID times and he's sneezing into his elbow. Yeah. So he's walking around like this. Yeah, that's because right. it's not Bella Lugosi. Because they had to keep filming the film and he died, so they had to get somebody else to do it. And the somebody else that they got to do it was Ed Wood's chiropractor. Yeah. (laughs) Not even, like, another actor? Not even a stunt double or anything, his body double or something like that. It was just a chiropractor. Yeah. Who doesn't Um, get a credit, which is a pity, because I think he's in most of the movie. It's also one of the reasons that... um, we see the same shot of Bella Lugosi coming out of and walking back into the woods three times in the space of ten minutes. And the same with when he goes into the house. Yeah. And walks in, and like, not his house, um, which that scene we'll get to because it's just hilarious. Yep. But um, yep. so when he walks in as the zombie into the man and wives who live next to the cemetery, their house. Yes, the it's pilot really and his just wife. The two shots, <laughs> that's exactly the same. So, but there, there are a few reused shots in the movie, oh, which is it's... which explains why it frequently goes from day to from night, from day to and night, back again, day yeah. to night, back again. And when it's and when Criswell at the funeral, the narrator says, mm-hmm. "The sunset of the day was the sunset of his heart." It's like, okay, it's sunset, it's about to be dark. And then the grave robbers yeah. come and it's full light. Yeah, so the grave robbers, when they're burying... Oh, the grave the diggers, wife, not the grave Grave robbers. diggers, grave robbers. Grave diggers, when they're burying the wife... Yes. It's daytime. You have a funeral at daytime. That's somewhat normal. Yeah, yeah. Right? Only if you're burying Vampira do you have a funeral at nighttime. <laughs> yeah. So then 
then they're there and they're like, what was that noise? And they were going to leave. And then it shows Vampire, Vampire or Vampira? Vampire. Vampira. Oh, okay, Vampira. Anyone can comment and tell us if you reckon it's Vampire or Vampira. Maybe you not... say Vampire, so we would like Vampira. Vampira, okay, sure. Whatever. That's not the worst thing about the movie. Yeah. So we, that's not the integral part of the plot. That's on us. That's, the, that's on us, not on Ed Wood. <laughs> they're digging the grave, and then they're like, oh, what's that over there? And from behind the crypt, which she must have just got buried in, even though the funeral just ended, and no, they haven't later. finished digging the grave. She comes out of the... When they all come out of that tiny, tiny crypt from Bella Lugosi's funeral... They held they hold Bella Lugosi's funeral at night. Yeah, which she walked I don't know into why. traffic, and then the people come out and it goes, "It is such a tragedy. Why was he buried in the crypt and she was buried in the ground?" <laughs> and then the woman sees Vampira through the um, trees Tree in the mist, and, the... and she's got the nails. The longest. Her. The longest fingernails and the smallest waist. Well, I think her fingernails are longer than her waist is wide. I need to get a... Do we have a it's just freaky how she, her waist is that small. Yeah. Everybody that is listening, watching, should have watched it. So they um, should have seen Bam- Vampira. Um, so speaking of narration... Oh, How good is Criswell? I mean, I... It's just... I can't describe the passion <laughs> that he puts into those movies. I shared... I did share the video before this episode of um, Criswell's little intro from Plan 9 from Outer Space, and it is great. Um, and he is not... <laughs> that's that's, that's a race. Yep. That's their waist. That's like what ten inches, and then look at her hands by comparison. Oh, who even? It's about knows? the same size. How do I make a choose a virtual background? Because I've got Criswell here. Oh, what, th- like this one? Yeah. Now this now one. I am Criswell. So this see. is Criswell. I um, predict the past. And so he is the narrator for Plan Nine from Outer Space, and. But he was something before Plan 9. Like, this isn't a character like the narrator in Rocky Horror. Yes. The amazing Criswell was an American psychic from... This from Wikipedia. Was an American psychic known for wildly inaccurate predictions. Uh, so he started as a radio announcer and broadcaster. He began buying time on a local Los Angeles television station in the early 50s to run infomercials for his Criswell family vitamins. Oh, that's great, because one of my favourite quotes has to do with vitamins that I'll come to. To fill the time, (laughs) he began his Criswell Predicts part of the show. This made him a minor offbeat celebrity in LA and around Hollywood, and his friendship with old show business people such as Mae West and rising fringe celebrities such as Caller Pandit made Criswell an entertaining presence at parties. This makes me think... that Criswell thought he was serious and Mae West invited him to parties to entertain people and laugh to at him. Laugh at him. Not yep. with him. Yep. Yep. So yeah, exactly. So you've got three of your favourite Quis- Criswell quotes. Oh, I think I just have two. Okay. The whole thing, I have quotes from the movie that are my favourites. Two of them are his. But the whole, the whole thing, we'll go through the quote. Obviously the first one is fantastic. Yes. My friends. Uh, my friends. The voice. Um, future events such as these will affect you in the future. Now, there's one before that. His very opening line, we are all concerned about the future because that is where we will spend the rest of our lives. <laughs> but then the, you know the movie's off to a bad start because the opening um, monologue, if you will, yes. is... Him saying that future events such as these will affect us in the future, but then also this future event is a retelling of accounts from something that's already happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's 
you're just like... I never put that together. Like, what's that happened on that fateful night in the future? But it's... People are retelling what's already happened? Yeah. Yeah. So it's so, a retelling of something that has already happened. But maybe he's saying it could happen more in the future. Okay, maybe. Because that is where we will spend the rest of our lives. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, your next favourite quote... From Criswell. From I'll say Criswell. It. It's earlier on, you know, he's the old man. He's come yep. back from Vampira's yep. funeral. And he's in the... Um, he's in his, their house. In now the daytime. I, yeah, in the daytime. But then it's quickly night time again. Yep. After he gets hit by a car. And I think it's this... There's another line before this one that's something like the house they once shared is now just a tomb or oh, something it's, like it's, that. Which... The house they shared is now just a tomb. The sky is now just a covering for her dead body. Yeah, and then this one, which actually is quite deep, this one. Yeah. The flowers, the flowers she had planted with her hands became nothing more than the lost roses of her cheeks. Steve, Steve, I want that. I love how they I love how he delivers it better as well. Because he's just like the flower that she had planted with her hands. Like that's a really <laughs> cool. Like how else was she planting them? Yeah, like, especially in the fifties. <laughs> oh, like there's no machinery at home no. to plant things in the fifties. Well, is it the fifties or is it the future? I'm still not really sure. But or is anyway. it the past? Who knows? Uh, um, my. Do you have the- Favourite Favorite Chris Well, yeah. And I'd I'd forgotten it until last night. Was at the end, he does the outro, um, and he says... You you proved that this didn't happen. So, (laughs) again, he's flicking between past and future. This has already happened, and this could happen to you in the future. And my probably two of my favourite lines from his are at the end. He also says... Someone could pass you in the night, but you wouldn't know it because they're from outer space. What yes. what does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know. So, someone could pass you in the night and you wouldn't know it because they're from outer space. That could be happening all the time. If you don't know about it, someone could be passing you at any time. My Uber Eats driver could have been from outer space. But you wouldn't know it, did he, if but I passed you in the night? Because it's in the future. So then, in order to really, like, ram home to us that uh, this does seem very futuristic and impossible, but it's not, it could happen to you in the future or in the past, he says, we used to laugh at the horseless carriage, like this bit. (laughs) So he lists off all these technological advancements. We used to laugh at the horseless carriage, at electricity, at uh, the telephone, at the airplane, and even vitamins. Doesn't he say (laughs) television? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But they're all technological advancements. The airplane, the car, television, the telephone, and even vitamins. (laughs) (laughs) Why does vitamins get thrown in there? Well, he's clearly got a well, I share just in realized. vitamin sales. And no. this would have just... Criswell um, Family boosted. Vitamins infomercials is where he did it, where he yeah. started. So obviously he's... Yeah. Um, are we moving on from the background? No, I was just getting, like, I don't know, dizzy from it. I wasn't doing Criswell justice. I'm gonna My move friends! To oh, God, can we keep that up? Because you can't, you can't see cemetery. a string in that one. Um, <laughs> but obviously, and it's actually hovering still. Yes. Which it never does in the movie at any point. I'm going to move over here. Um, so, Criswell, we... if anybody listening or watching has seen the opening or the closing monologues of Criswell from Plan 9 from Outer Space and thinks they can do an impersonation, yeah. get in touch. Because I want our, I want the intro to, from um, Two Drink Cinema to be done by Criswell. Oh, yeah. I think he might... Yeah, I think he's dead. He died um, in 1982, so well before oh, either of us were sh- born. Anyway. At the age of 75. Yep. One more thing on Criswell. 
Okay. I have one more thing on Criswell before we go. So it's it's all over the place, right? So yep. he his fame brought him appearances on the Jack Parr show, which must mean something, um, which allowed him to publish his predictions in three publications of Spaceway magazine, as well as run a weekly syndicated newspaper article. We discussed syndication in our other episode. It means it's a newspaper article got picked up across the country. He later published three books of predictions from now to the year 2000, your next 10 years and forbidden predictions. That was obviously the adult version. Yes. Um, he recorded an LP, Your Incredible Future, featuring 84 minutes of his predictions in his own oh voice. My I want it. God. I want it. It's a shame that both of our birthdays have already gone. Yeah. Um, okay. After Criswell's death, his longtime friend Paul Marco, who, is, who stars in Plan 9 from Outer Space, released Criswell's song, Someone Walked Over My Grave, oh, no. on a seven inch <laughs> record. So Criswell wrote this song, Someone Walked Over My Grave, and Paul Marco, who plays one of the bumbling cops in Plan 9 from Outer Space, <laughs> released it. And it was, yeah, released Criswell's song on a seven inch record, which was recorded by Criswell as a memorial song that he wanted released posthumously. Oh my God, so he, that is he crazy. wrote and recorded this song and said to the bumbling cop from Edwards Films, release this when I die. How weird is that? <laughs> uh, but, but, and it's about someone walking over his grave. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit, it's a bit strange, but um, I think so was Criswell. And one so. more thing, Mae West wrote and recorded a song called Criswell Predicts for her album The Fabulous Mae West. I'm going to have to listen to this at some point. I'm going to have to find the 84-minute LP. (laughs) I'm getting it. Don't worry about it. I'm all over that. Um, Um, Speaking of bumbling cops... Yes? This Plan 9 from Outer Space could have been over a lot quicker if the cops weren't so incompetent. Well, I made a couple of notes about their incompetence. Are they meant to be the comic relief of the film? I don't know if they're meant to be like Keystone Cops and like that yeah. kind of thing, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know if they are. There's, I don't know if Edward was like, we need comic relief. No, I don't think... You probably didn't think about it that much. There's two police officers. There's the detective and Tor Johnson, the detective inspector, who dies. Mm. Um, the two normal cops, I reckon they're the best actors in the film. Well, one of them is the one that's like the, the serious one. The, yeah, the least worse. The one that isn't Charles Boyle. Yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, he that's he's not bad. Like he delivers his lines pretty well. But I don't know if it's that good or if it's like by comparison. He's oh no, I'm not saying amazing. he's. A, I'm not saying he's a good actor. I'm saying he's the best actor in this film. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. So the one that looks like uh, Charles Boyle from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, yep. he is the one that released Criswell's Creepy Death Song. Okay. Okay. His name is Paul Marco, mm-hmm. and he starred as um, Kelton the Cop or Officer Kelton yep. in all of Edward's movies. So he's the same. Police so movie, in every Bride movie. of the Monster, he plays Kelton. In Plan 9 from Outer Space, he plays Patrolman Kelton. In Night of the Ghouls, he plays Kelton. In the, and then comes back, this is, this is great, and shows the power of how terribly good this movie is. Okay, good. In 2009, there was a video for a series that was going to come called Kelton's Dark Corner. Oh, no. And it was this guy, Paul Marco, playing Kelton, an older, wiser, more resilient Kelton the cop, um, facing off against aliens, zombies, and monsters in the main streets of LA in real life. So they've taken this character from these 1950s B-grade <laughs> films and then put him in the 2000s. 50 years older yeah. than he is in, like... Yeah. Must be 90. 
to um, to meet monsters and ghouls and stuff in the real streets of LA. I oh, know that's bizarre. Um, there's I just think yeah, so many bizarre things. My favourite incompetent police moment is right. Oh, I think I know what you're going to say. The now detective guy who take over took over who because took over when George Jossie gets killed. Yep. Had a stroke mid sentence. Um, has his gun? Just has his gun out, right? Got my gun. I'm ready to shoot a zombie, a yep. grave robber from outer space. I'm like, oh, or a bobcat. The- like, yeah. I think a bobcat could have killed Tor Johnson. Yeah. Um, which also brings me to another funny line we'll get to. He's, so he's standing there with his gun and he's like, oh, my hat's in the way. So readjusts his hat with his gun. <laughs> so he's like, what is the peek out of the way? Then he's like, oh, I've got an itch on my shoulder. <laughs> Better scratch my shoulder with my loaded gun. Yep. No. The better one, the better one, right? Oh. That he's just a town cop, right? He might not he's have had like a lieutenant. Yeah, but he might not have had a super amount of firearms training. You would think okay. a colonel from the US Army or Air Force yeah. might have had better training. At the yeah. end, when there's the lieutenant, the pilot, and the colonel of the Air Force in the alien ship, just after they've yep. been called stupid. Just after they've been called stupid, the the lieutenant goes to step forward, the colonel stops him, and then puts his gun on his chest to stop him. So he's standing there with the loaded gun, right? You have to play the colonel and the lieutenant now. He's standing there with the loaded gun. The, The lieutenant goes to step forward, and the colonel goes, No. Just hold that. Hold that, <laughs> or I'm going to shoot you. Oh, now. I'll shoot you. <laughs> Just no firearms training whatsoever. It's really disappointing. I expected more from this. Um, my <laughs> other, my other um, line. One of my favourite quotes from an incompetent cop. Yes, it's quite hard to say incompetent cop. Um, so they've just rocked up at the. Cemetery again. Yes. So the the car arrives in the daytime, and then they in the cemetery, and it's nighttime. Yeah. So obviously day night, but so the, the car, car driving the police the car the police car arrives in the daytime. The morgue wagon, slang for obviously ambulance, arrives in the nighttime. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they find Inspector Clay dead. Yes. By a bobcat, right? So they have to work out. We're going to not have the, to find out. Who not the this. digger bobcat. No, a, a, a bobcat. Yeah, like a, a cat. cat. Yeah, that's an yeah. American thing in case any of... We might have an American viewer. We might. But uh, um, for Australians, it's not for digging up your backyard. Well, that's what like I a, automatically thought in yeah. my mind. <laughs> Which there would be a bobcat in the cemetery anyway. But hey, anyway, get on to it. So they're like, we're going to have to work out what's happening around here. In the cemetery. Yes. And the quote is on the head cop now. Yeah. It goes, I don't know, Clay's dead, murdered, and someone <laughs> responsible. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure there's always someone responsible if it's a murder. If it's a murder, someone yeah. generally is responsible. That's yes. kind of that's what makes it a murder. Um now the the cop has another one. Later, after Inspector Clay is resurrected, they yes. they find the grave, mm-hmm. and they say, "Oh, it looks like some if, if someone had broken in, the dirt would be piled over here. Looks like someone's broken out." And he goes, "Oh, we'll make a detective of you yet." And then yes. he goes, "Oh, we shouldn't go in the grave without the next of kin approval." And then they go, oh, but we can't see the gravestone to know who it is. And then he goes, all right, get in there then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, in that, in that case, then yeah. you, better, you better go yeah. in. One more. Can I say one more from this, this lieutenant? Cole? Please, please. The colonel comes, right? And the colonel says, flying saucers are real. And he goes, oh, and there's aliens and there's this, that and the other. And then the lieutenant cop says... 
I don't believe you. I'm a policeman. I only deal in facts. But okay, let's look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't believe you. I only deal in facts. But yeah. let's do it. Yeah. Well, let's which do is it. it. I'm fact. But which hey, I'm, I'm not busy. There's no murders or resurrections on. Let's go sort it out. And then the question comes up about the colonel in the scene before where the general brings him into the office and says, how long have you been in charge of saucer activities? And he goes, oh, for a while. And then he goes, and you know that we're saying there's no saucers. Like, yeah. you just, you've just you put me in charge of saucer activity for the last five years. And his response is something like, well, if I didn't believe they exist, I wouldn't have a job. Something yeah. like that. Which like, is just like, like, well, that's smart. It's a fair point because you've put him in charge of saucer activity and then have a go at him when he says he believes in sources. Yeah, yeah. And sources are real, uh, so they go back to the town um, to find the ship that's made out of a metal that no one's ever heard anything like that before. And they go, dong, yeah. dong, 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 dong. I haven't heard of it's little. It's literally metal, hitting metal. It's literally like I used to when I was a little kid. Maybe this is showing that I'm weird. Put my ear against the metal poles of the veranda at school and then knock it, and you could hear all the pings echoing up the pole. That's just yeah. what it sounds like. That's normal, yeah. I don't care. Well, because it's, ho- it's a hollow metal tube. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like, I've never heard anything like that before. I'm like, I've heard that all through primary school. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I, just, I had to see what each pole sounded like. Yeah. Is that what you did? Like, you went around to each pole and was like, dun, dun, oh, F sharp, dun, dun, oh, F. Yeah. Like, what... Like, I don't know, I just did it. It's 30 <laughs> years ago now. Don't ask me questions. Oh, just gosh. remember that I did it. Um, so, completely incompetent police, a completely incompetent um, armed forces who were like, we're oh, going to put yeah. someone in charge of sources, but there's no sources. Yes, but then, oh, yes. But then also, <laughs> we with the aliens, at one point, Three saucers fly out of the giant mothership that looks like a boob. Yes. And um, they fly out and then... But then there's only two aliens on Earth. Yeah, no, but there's a little cutaway montage of flying newspapers at the screen that don't fly because obviously the $60,000 budget didn't include that effect. Saying, they're yeah. seen over DC, they're seen over New York. But the one we're focusing on is Eros and uh, the lady. What's her name? Anna. I don't know. I can't remember. Tanner. Vanna? No, Tanner. She's a bit incompetent as well. Oh, but also, Eros! Eros! Tanner. Um, there's a quote from Eros later in the movie. Yeah. And it, it's something like... Very 50s. Um, it's something like... Oh. On our planet, women are to just re repopulate yeah, yeah, yeah. the race. It's to enhance the race or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and not fight man's battles. Yeah. That whole last 15, 20 minutes of the film is just so American. It's just so, oh, God, we actually haven't talked about why they're here. Let's all cram it into about 15, 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, that monologue by Eros, who is the campus alien you've ever seen, who's played by a man called second. Dudley Manlove. Yeah, yeah. Um, He's the second campus alien. The campus oh, alien the is the leader. Yeah. but Because this is how he says goodbye. That's how you have to leave the room. <laughs> but also, <laughs> like it's, the, it's the eye roll. When, the, when the, they show Tor Johnson to the leader, and they, they're... Electrode gun doesn't work and Tor Johnson almost kills Eros. He just that goes back to Sid Town and he just goes... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sid's <down>. incompetent. <laughs> but, no, other than that, Dudley Mann loves um, going on about how stupid men are. Stupid! 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 And why they've invaded. That whole yeah. bit of, like, leading up to that is so 1950s, post-war American, look how powerful our men are. Yeah. Because it's the pilot 
going to protect his wife. It's the colonel going show, to show the might of the armed forces of America. Um, and it's just like, oh, you know, our guns have worked on flesh and blood before and you look like you've got plenty of both. Like, the, these guys are clearly aliens with advanced technology. You've just yes. got a gun that you use to scratch your earlobe. Yeah. Like, they're, <laughs> they're ahead of you. But it's, oh, it's anyway, just... be so stupid. Yeah. And then he points his gun at his partner to try yeah. and stop him. Well, that's how any race can be so stupid. Yeah. But it's just okay. like... And that was one of the things of this 50s B-grade sci-fi horror. Because um, it's, it's a genre of its own. It's all its own genre, this B-grade sci-fi horror thing of the 50s. And a lot of it came about because... Americans were still scared from after the war, and they were scared, obviously, of the communists because that's what they were told to be oh, scared cool. of. Yeah. Um, and so people went to see these movies to see an invasion get thwarted by the American power. Yes. And so that's what this last 15 minutes of the movie is. is like, oh, we can't shoot it with our guns because they're so advanced, but our men can still save the yeah. by just um, punching the alien. <laughs> yeah, just punching it. Yeah, and then um, everything catches fire. Yes. <laughs> and, and Tanner is no good. There's no fire Tanner extinguisher Tanner. that she can work on the whole ship. She can't do anything. No. She can just, he's clearly dead. She can just turn the dial to open the door. Yeah. There was some... Um, this whole ending ex- explaining why... They've come to Earth to scare humans. Yes. It's very strange. Um, I actually get it. Yeah. It's it's much easier to like in terms of it, in terms of cramming a whole lot of explanation and story into the end of the movie, it's actually much easier to understand than the last third of the Matrix. Right, yeah, that's yeah, um, true. But what I would have done if I was uh, Ed Wood is made sure that more than one of my characters could say the word. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, "You have invented dynamite, and you blew up things, and blah blah blah." And now you and th- now you've invented not, because nobody can say it. I'm not really no, you sure go with, what the word actually is. You go with Dudley Man Love's pronunciation, Solomonite. Which makes sense Solomonite. because it's solar energy and dynamite in yeah, one word. Solomonite. Solomonite. But and then the pilot says Solomite. <laughs> the colonel says Solarite. Yeah. And then like the lieutenant that. says Solarite. And then Tor and then Tor and then Tor Johnson <laughs> says Solarite. <laughs> they try and um, they try and say it, but it's clearly like we we can only do two takes. So they'd be like, yeah. one, okay, next, whatever you say this time is just going to be how it's pronounced. Just have, <laughs> so have was two like, goes of it, and we'll pick we, the closest one. Well, well, how do we... But we don't know of this whole little... Yep, like, yes, yep, that'll move be. on. We've got <laughs> yeah, fi- cut, print, done. De- December 1 is the deadline. We've got to go. Yeah. <laughs> this graveyard's being rented by another movie next week. Um, oh, what a dank graveyard as well. Obviously, graveyards aren't cheery places. But it is literally just looks like it's in the middle of a deserted town paddock. Yeah. Like no, there's no fence. It's on the edge of town, and that's why they lived there, because it would be quiet, um, yeah. the pilot and his wife. Um, and it's a little too quiet, and then it isn't quiet when a flying saucer lands there. But... the. We've talked about the bad script and we've talked about the bad acting. We've talked about the reusing of scenes, which mm-hmm. all are three hallmarks of low-budget, B-grade films. But the graveyard has the low sets. The low sets. The, the, the cardboard, two cardboard oh. triangles stuck together to make the Star of David. Yeah. And the, clearly the scene where... Tor Johnson is rising from the dead. <laughs> yes. And it's clearly a, a very short, a small set or prop or whatever. Yeah, the hole's about this big. The hole's about this big. Yeah. 
And with with a little piece of cardboard above it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then the leaves on the on the ground and are about size. the same size as the gravestone. Yeah, they're normal size leaves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then at one point, when the pilot's wife is getting chased by Tor Johnson, she falls over and the fake grass moves. Yeah. <laughs> because it's obviously just like green carpet. And I think some of the headstones or gravestones just fall over. Yeah, I think the lady that's chased by Vampira after Bella Lugosi's funeral knocks mm. over a gravestone. Yeah. Also, if you were, say you lived, with one, if, why would you live on the edge of a cemetery? Because it's quiet. They said that. Um, two, if you knew there were zombies rising from the dead. Yes. And one of the zombies came into your bedroom at night. Yeah. Would you then proceed to run into the, into cemetery. the cemetery? Or would you run in the complete opposite direction, assuming there is a road? Maybe into the town. Yeah, where people are. Yeah. Not the cemetery, where more zombies and empty graves are. Yeah, and where they just said to the cop, this weird flashing light came from the cemetery. Yeah, but I'm going to run, run that way. Um... It's, yeah, it's very strange. That scene is very strange. But w one of the things that the scene just before that, before the pilot goes off again, um, there's just a few unnecessary scenes. Mm. Like, I think the whole, the government's trying to cover up flying saucers is unnecessary. And he's been muzzled by Army Brash. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Army Brash. Three times in one scene. I'm oh, muzzled by Armour Brass. Fuck on Lake Horns, they muzzled by Armour Brass. <laughs> I see, I see. <laughs> um, but then, so that's, that whole thing is unnecessary. Like, the, and then the meeting, and then the, this other scene where the colonel is, the general is looking in the binoculars, and then the, the other army man comes along and says, we were just shooting at clouds. Yeah. That whole thing's unnecessary, but the most unnecessary scene is just before the pilot leaves again and she says, I hug your pillow at night because sometimes I feel lonely. Yeah. Like, what? what? Why? Like, we get you're in love. You're married. We get you're in love. Do, do we need this whole, you know, oh, sometimes I get lonely and I'm... Um, I have to hug your pillow at night. It's just, it was just weird. I think it was Bella Lugosi going, oh, we need some romance in here. I need to show people I can write a serious dialogue that yeah. isn't as deep as the roses of her cheeks or whatever the quote was. Well, let's put a little love story in there. I'm like, their husband and wife, there there's love. already a love story. Yeah, yeah. Damsel in distress. Um, so... That's most of my... Oh, actually, two things about the movie that I thought weren't terrible. The titles weren't bad. The titles and the music's not awful. That was the other thing. I thought the score yeah. was pretty good. Like, Might it's a very classic, just like, um, you know, horror, suspense movie score. Yeah, yeah. I thought I had some available. Not. This is how you say hello or you greet your leader in your whatever country they're from, planet. They never say what planet they're from. Uh, no. Just it's in the they're same solar system. No, but then they're in the same galaxy, he says at the start, but then he says our sun. Like same solar yeah. system. Yeah. Galaxy has more than one sun. Milky Way. Yeah, they're all stars, which are all suns. Yeah. So he says we're in the same galaxy, but then he says our sun, like the same solar system. It's very confusing. They're from Mars. Let's just say they're from Mars. Yes, but yeah. they're, they're humans, of course. Stupid. And Stupid. And they've got the dictorobotary. Dictorobotary. Or as you call it, the language computer. Yeah, <laughs> because you're a stupid race who can't come up with a real name. We have this computer that translates languages. What should we call it? Oh, the language computer. I love as well that scene where they're listening to the message that's translated to English. Yeah. 
And some shots, some of the shots <laughs> Edward yeah. chose to do was weird because it was just like, let's just focus on the general's facial reaction yeah. while he's listening to this thing. And some of the facial reactions were like, mm -hmm. oh, like, what do you reckon on this one? Like, it's the, it's like the start great. of the American power arrogance. He's like, oh, these stupid aliens, let's have a listen to them. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Dick de oh, oh, oh. And then the Colonel is like, mm, yeah, he's a dumbass. Yeah. But stupid. I'm going to keep saying it. It's so funny. But just the way that Dudley does, does love It does make sense. If you could explode the particles of sunlight, yeah. you would destroy the entire universe. Scientifically, it makes sense. Scientifically? Yeah. Yeah, that's a word. Yeah. <laughs> you did half a science degree. <laughs> God. That was, uh, anyway. Scientifically, it's correct. If you exploded the particles of sunlight, you would explode the universe. Yes, and everything the light touches is exploded. Yes, except for like that shadowy light. place over there. Yeah. The elephant graveyard is the only thing that's left. <laughs> the hyenas are the only thing that survives the Solomonite bomb. <laughs> so then the hyenas are in charge. Yeah, Whoopi Goldberg, look out. She voiced one of the hyenas. I know, I, I, I know, know that. that. Um, I think I've gone through all of my notes. I have. Yeah. We talked, it's just so I masculine at quotes. the end. Yeah. It's so masculine at the end. So good. We love at vitamins. <laughs> Is it strange for one country to protect itself from another one? You have done this. <laughs> Is it strange for one man to protect himself from another man? You have also done this. It's not like we catered to how she talks. Dudley man love is like, enough woman speaking. Yeah. You're That's just here to here procreate with me on this plan nine. Yeah. I want, you know what I want to do? Marvel. You know Marvel, right? Yes, I do. Kind of Marvel. Yeah. Marvel is all about the um, mini series. On yes, on Disney, Disney Plus, Plus now. Yep. I want an eight-part Disney series. Plans one through eight. Plans one through eight. Yeah. But they I want to know what plans one through eight were and why they didn't work. Also, if you had, say, ten plans, ten is a good number of plans to have. Yes. Right? If you had ten plans and you were the leader of this entire alien race and Eros came to you and said, we tried plan nine, wouldn't you already know what Plan 9 was off the top of your head? Oh, uh, uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. The resurrection yeah. of the dead. The resurrection of the dead. <laughs> but it's, but he's the one I said before. It sounds like he can't remember his lines because he goes, Oh, yes, the resurre resurrection of the dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh. At least he can say resurrection. So, um, Plan 9... Uh, Hilariously awful. So, so bad it's good. So wrong it's right. I, I and so I, I don't know how to sum it up. So bad it's good that it features in a Seinfeld episode. Yes. Like in the episode of the Chinese restaurant, Jerry's very keen to get to the cinema because they're showing Plan Nine from Outer Space, and he wants to see it. Uh, he says the worst movie ever made, and he even says he goes, "This isn't Plans One through Eight from Outer Space." <laughs> This is plan nine. This is the one that worked. But then it didn't work. No, but they did manage to resurrect the dead. But if it wasn't for the pilot punching Eros, then the whole world wouldn't have been saved. True. And then we wouldn't be here to talk about it because the our stupid, stupid scientists would have destroyed would have... the entire universe with a solve of a light. That's solve of a light. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. true. And I wouldn't have just got a text from the... Department of Health. <laughs> <laughs> to say, uh, get your, are you going to get your jab? Is that what they're saying? No, it's... You went to an exposure site. It's, have you been to Footscray Market recently? Like, no, I have not. Yeah, I haven't either. Good. Anyway, that's completely <laughs> off topic. That's a, that, that can sum up the end of Plan 9. That's enough. Um, Two out of ten. Eight, no, eight out of ten. Well, I think this is why it's got a 68% on Rotten Tomatoes, because people now watch it and yeah. enjoy it because it's awful. Yes. Like 
and a movie, another movie we'll have to watch down the track. Maybe we'll do this kind of thing for our next live, Robot Monster. Robot Monster, which, in my opinion, is worse than playing that... Oh, I don't know now. Robot Monster. So that's the alien monster robot. That, that is, is clearly a man in a bear suit with a old school scuba helmet. Diving helmet and the bunny ears that I had on my little 34 centimetre TV in my bedroom in the 90s. Yes. <laughs> um, so maybe our next live we'll watch Robot Monster. Okay. It's, it's so... You see many, many more strings in Robot Monster than you do in Plan 9. I think at one point you in see the Robot hand. Monster, you can see a hand holding a prop that's yeah. on fire or something. Um, and a lizard has a fin stuck to it to look like a Godzilla-type monster. Well, we're going to spoil the movie. Ladies and gentlemen, that's something to look forward to uh, and everybody else watching. That's something to look forward to for our next live for Robot yes. Monster. Shall we finish with some trivia? Sure. Who um, is Tor Johnson? He was a Swedish wrestler, anyway. Just oh, I made a Seinfeld time. reference too. Can I put this in? Oh, there you go. And look, speaking of uh, clunky explanation exposition for the last third of a movie. <laughs> Why do you have that? That's from our first Facebook Live. Really? Yeah, this is going to be me with all of the screens of this is how much I'm watching during lockdown last oh, year. Oh, right, right, <laughs> right. Anyway, um, trivia. We're going to do an trivia. IMDb top four. Now, we decided not to do it for um, anybody that's in Plan 9 from Outer Space because what else have they done, really? Um, so, Especially Dudley Man Love. I don't know if we should be talking about his movies. Yeah, I shouldn't, wink, be, wink. shouldn't be putting him into the He's game. not actually a porn star, he just sounds like one. Like John, and, and playing a very appropriate style of character. Like in um, Are You Being Served, the really camp guy from Are You Being Served, he's John Inman. Oh, like he's in a man. Yeah, thanks for explaining that one. Um, he was in... Two episodes of Dragnet. Uh, Dudley Man, Man Love. Yeah, and in two episodes of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Ooh. He could have I didn't like the... Oh, yeah, he, and he was in Plan 9 from Outer Space. He was, in, he was the narrator of a short in 1957. He does have a good voice. Like, it's a good narrating voice. Stupid! Stupid! But his last known thing was in 1962. But he didn't die. Uh. He died That's in 1996. Right. Aged 81. Vale Dudley Manlove. Vale. We're not going to do the what are you known for Dudley Manlove because... Because you just said them all. <laughs> uh, it's Plan 9 from Outer Space, Ed Wood's Final Curtain, The Creation of the Humanoids, and Alfred Hitchcock Presents. What we are going to do is we're going to go to Ed Wood... The 1994 half piss take biopic of Edward, directed I really by that one, actually. Tim Burton. So, surprise, surprise, starring Johnny Depp. Right. Okay. So, Johnny Depp as Edward for... and Helena Bonham Carter as a vampire. <laughs> no, Sarah Jessica no. Parker, isn't it? Um, so, yeah. Johnny Depp, IMDb known for. If you're watching live, um, you can play along. Play along. Comment. Um, we've got. So it's two points if you get something in the right spot. Um, one point if you get it right, but in the wrong spot. Okay? And you have to be specific with your... I've had an absolute mind blank on Johnny Depp. You have to be specific with your sequels. Um, right. Okay. Well, that's just given me one that I could do. I think I'm just going to name all Tim Burton films and yeah. try my luck. Um, one, two, three. I've got three. One's actually, I'm going to change the order. Of one, two, two, three. Um, I've got four. four. I've got four. Okay, let's have a look. 
Um, where's IMDb? Here. Uh, Johnny Depp. Deep, 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 deep. Okay, so here we go. Johnny Depp, known Jonathan for... Jonathan Depp. Number one. Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Oh, I did not have that in my top four at Me all. Me neither, but as soon as I saw it, it makes sense. I don't um, think that's what he's most known for, though. Well, anyway. according to IMDb, it is. Uh, in the number two spot, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. I had that as number one. Okay. So that's that, one point for me. Is that the first one? That's the first one. Okay, I had Pirates one. I didn't say Black Pearl. Is that okay? Two we'll points. Wait till the end. Then Did you have that is, second? Yeah. Oh, rude. Then yeah, I had... Count. You have to say the full name. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Oh, I didn't have that either. Is that the, that's the third one, I think. That's the fourth one. Okay, well, I didn't have I that. I think it's the fourth one, because it goes... I had Dead Man's Chest on there as the fourth spot. Okay. Which is the second one. No, At World's End is the third, I think. So, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl 2003, that's the first one. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest is the second one, 2006. Yep. Pirates of the Caribbean, At World's End is the third one. Pirates of the Caribbean, On Stranger Tides is the fourth uh, one. Yep. Okay, Pirates of the Caribbean, Salazar's Revenge, 2017 is the fifth one. I didn't know there was a fifth one. There is. Uh, so we've got Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, Pirates of the Caribbean, one. Pirates of the Caribbean, three. I've got one point. And then in the fourth spot, didn't you have Pirates, one, in the second spot? No, I had in the first spot. Oh, okay, so I'm a point ahead. So it comes down to this one. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. If you get this one right, one right spot, you win. Oh, you withdraw, actually. Because I might... Well, I know I have it. It's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, I had that second. I had that third. Oh, so so I've win. got three points. Oh, that is terrible. Edward Scissorhands? No. I didn't even think of that one. Far out. Yeah, well, I sucked at that. Oh, that was hacked by the Russians. That the, There's no way I lost. Oh, you reckon? Yeah. Um, what, the Russians told me what Johnny Depp was known for? No, you wrote it down and then they hacked your notepad oh, and yeah. IMDb. It's this with this computerised biro yep. that the Russians gave me when I last visited Vladimir. Um... No, it could be hacked by the Ukrainians. We have a Ukrainian listener, according to our podcast yeah. uh, analytics. Well, then maybe we should say that they hack things. <laughs> no, but that might come in handy to have a hacker on our side. Oh, right. We'll leave that for there. We might get in trouble if we keep talking about yeah, hacking okay. on the internet. <laughs> True. Especially with our webcam on. Who knows who's in this <laughs> Zoom meeting. The um, Department of Health is listening. So I have to pick a movie for you to watch. Oh, I, picked, I thought of it last night. Oh, you might have already seen it. Is it Robot Monster? No, have you seen Deadpool? No, I haven't. Okay, Deadpool. The first one? The first one, yeah. God, you know, I've been kind of avoiding this. For a reason? Deadpool. Well, it's similar to your reasoning with other movies that you Oh, because everyone said it's good? Because everybody says, Brett, it's so funny. You'll find it hilarious. Yeah, well, that's the same reason I didn't watch Big Business. <laughs> <laughs> or is it because up until last week you'd never heard of it before? <laughs> that's the one. You could have told me Big Business was 9 to 5 and I wouldn't have known the difference. <laughs> um, all right, so watch um, Deadpool. I will. Okay. Um, shall we wrap it up there? I think so. It's been a bit over an hour, just about an hour now. Okay. We normally Dude. would, uh, yeah, have a one-hour episode. Um, yeah. So thank you, everybody who has viewed and come and gone and watched and listened, hopefully, while we've been talking. Um, we, yes, thank you. Hopefully we won't be in another week of lockdown. I think we will be. I think we will be. Um, so we'll do a, we'll work something out. Stay tuned on the socials to know what's happening next. Um, we only we have started planning, but if for those people 
but listen, it'll probably become obvious that we really only plan like one, maybe two weeks ahead. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Our episode will come out as normal Thursday. Thursday is now our release date. So mm-hmm. there will be a new episode um, coming out this Thursday on all of our channels. Do you want me to tell you what it's about? The episode that's coming out? Yeah. Hmm, should I cruise well predict it? Yeah. Because it is the future, but it did happen in the past. Yes, it is pre-recorded. Right. Um, wait, what the one we, that's what coming out about? on this Thursday. Spartacus? Oh. Shit, what it is, is it? Spartacus. I haven't edited it, I haven't edited it yet. Okay, it's going to be something else. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Spartacus... Yeah, no, Spartacus is coming out Thursday. Spartacus, yes. Yeah. Um, Good. And then we'll see what happens. We'll work out next Tuesday. Um, Correct. For our next recording session. Thank you for listening, everybody. Farewell, so uh, well, my friends. Thank you, Brett. Uh, thank thank you. you, Criswell. Thank you, Edward, for the glory of uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space. This has been Two Drink Cinema. Make sure you follow us on the socials so you don't miss anything. And make sure you subscribe, rate, review, thumbs up uh, on whatever channel you're watching. Cheers.